did the US miss a trick in the 1990s? They, they, I mean, the USSR collapsed, disintegrated. Then the US dealt with socialist regimes worldwide. Yugoslavia as an example, they broke up the Yugoslavia. And then uh, the USSR, was, uh, the successor state was Russia and it was in, in, in the hands of Boris Yeltsin who was very pro-West. Did they f miss a trick by failing to destroy the, the Russian power altogether? I mean, with the rise of Putin, the power of Russia started slowly consolidating again and rebuilding. So, should, did they, should, they have the, should they have taken the opportunity to end Russia as a threat once and for all? Well, they, their, their approach was different, <clears throat> which was to get a hold of uh, Russian uh, raw materials, Russian resources, move Russia into a market economy according to the recipes uh, that, that they have, which resulted in a total collapse of the Russian economy uh, and created a lot of uh, distress in the country. Like they did in Iraq in a different way. They disbanded uh, the Ba'ath yes. uh, party altogether with the result that the structures uh, of the country disappeared and led to instability and terrorism. In Russia, it's not the same story, but once you break down the structures of an established economy very, very quickly, it will cause a lot of distress. This resulted in the rise of the oligarchs and everything else and the looting of the uh, economy, <clears throat> the Russian economy. And Yeltsin uh, was a bit of a drunkard. Yes. Uh, he was not all there. Yeah. And uh, they exploited it, but even Yeltsin started complaining. And then what the mistake they committed, I won't say it's a mistake. It was a very well designed uh, uh, policy that today Russia may be down, tomorrow it may not be down. It's the largest country in the world with huge resources, energy resources in particular, uh, but others too, nuclear power, space power. So how then to make sure that uh, the transatlantic area is protected from the resurgence of uh, Russian power? So why not take the opportunity to do two things? Expand NATO and in tandem expand the economic union. Reason being that this served America's purposes in both ways. On the security side, uh, they would have ensured through this policy that uh, NATO was a centerpiece of European security and they controlled NATO. And the expansion of the European Union also meant that uh, Russia will be pushed further and further away uh, from uh, Europe economically. And then through NATO and the security control that the uh, United States has uh, over uh, Europe, they will also be able to, in a sense, uh, control uh, the European economy. You see, the biggest uh, <clears throat> challenge the European Union has faced, even today, that uh, despite all the tussles they have in various critical areas with the United States, and now with the CHIP Act and Inflation Reduction Act, they're very, very worried. But what choice do they have? Once you are dependent on the uh, United States for your security, then this limits your choices. Uh, which is why they are following dutifully in line with Russian policy against uh, uh, Ukraine. It was in the interest of the United States uh, to have the Baltic states, of course, but countries like Poland and others, to join the European Union. Because the diaspora, Polish diaspora, Ukrainian diaspora now, uh, very, very powerful and strong in the United States and Canada. Very big push in terms of making these countries part of the European Union and, of course, uh, NATO. And now you see what is happening. Uh, the United States and Britain now, uh, since it is, no, it is no longer in the European Union, they are uh, building up what Rumsfeld has said, new Europe versus old Europe. So Poland is being built up as a counter to the France, Germany tandem, which has been the centerpiece yes. for the European Union. So all this serves uh, United States uh, interests. So the expansion of NATO uh, was a deliberate act, despite the promises given uh, to uh, to Yeltsin uh, and uh, to Gorbachev uh, and uh, later to Yeltsin uh, that uh, that NATO initially that it will not move an inch uh, eastward of uh, Germany. Uh, and then trying to make the, uh, make the Russians swallow the bitter pill uh, by saying that, okay, we'll create a, 
uh, Russia NATO Council. So where we can discuss all these matters as a kind of a SOP that you are part of the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, Russia was too weak to, to resist yes. uh, until Putin came to power. But even Putin in the initial years wanted actually to have an understanding with the European Union, uh, a deal with the European Union. For the European Union said you have to come to us uh, on the same conditions as other countries which want to join the European Union, which is that uh, you have to uh, you have to modify your internal uh, economic, political, legal uh, systems and stuff like that. Uh, you know, because there's a lot of waiting time uh, for other countries. And the Russians said, look, uh, we are not uh, Bulgaria or countries like that. We are Russia. So we have to deal with each other equally, yeah. which means that they never really got to move forward uh, on some kind of a trade agreement or not a trade agreement, some kind of a larger agreement between the European Union uh, and Russia. And with regard to uh, Europe in general, Putin, I remember, uh, was saying that we are a European country, our future is with Europe. And that if we remain in Europe, if we are linked to Europe, it will be a guarantee of Russian democracy. He had that thinking too, until of course, they rebuffed him left, right and center. Yes. And in 2007, he made that speech at Munich. I was ambassador to Russia then. And uh, I analyzed that speech and there was a lot of merit in his speech. Uh, and that was the breaking point. But nevertheless, he still, while opposing the West, tried to maintain a degree of equilibrium uh, towards the West. But uh, the West was very contemptuous. Look at what Obama said, that uh, you're just a regional power. In fact, he said, and I was amazed at that time that he said this, that there are three problems facing the world. Terrorism, Ebola, and Russia. Uh, this is a kind of contempt. And he pers made personal contempt, uh, contemptuous remarks against uh, Putin, mm -hmm. saying he's like a schoolboy with an attitude who sits at the back of the room, the back of the class, things like that. Uh, so there it is. I think, uh, you know, the other thing is, which, which I am, I studied that a little bit, their game plan, in, during the Yeltsin years, was to get hold of 30% of Russia's energy sector. Yes. That's why all the big companies, uh, uh, American companies, uh, moved in in a very big way. You, you can see still photographs of Tillerson uh, with Putin and stuff like that. Anyway, when Putin came back to power, he had he he done his PhD. Uh, on uh, Russia's energy sector, so you knew exactly. You're very well, very, very well informed about <laughs> Russia's energy sector. Uh, incidentally, that's why Khodorkovsky and everything else, that the entire affair where uh, uh, his company was taken over uh, by uh, Russia, mm -hmm. uh, in which even the Harvard University had shares. It was a huge, huge issue <laughs> because of that. Um, uh, it was taken over, taken over by Rosneft. Putin, from his point of view, rightly said that they want to take hold of the biggest jewel in our economy. We won't let them do it. Mm -hmm. They were still present and uh, they were still collaborating. Uh, but he reorganized Russia's energy sector, created these new uh, state-owned players uh, who then uh, were able to resist this American encroachment and and actually hemmed in the oligarchs so that they could not be tools for Western uh, companies to actually infiltrate into Russia's energy sector beyond a certain point. After these sanctions were announced, uh, the company has moved out, as also other American companies. So to answer your question, uh, United States didn't have the horsepower uh, to actually uh, dismantle Russia after the Soviet Union had collapsed. Mm. Uh, they thought that they could, uh, from the uh, inside, uh, control uh, Russia and get access to their raw materials and, and resources, etc., uh, etc. Et Plus, of course, they were able to uh, get hold of uh, certain very advanced uh, sectors of the, I won't say take hold, they were able to get technological know-how I see. Uh, from Russia in certain sectors in Russia is, is very advanced. I see. So, uh, space, uh, uh, for instance. And then with the NATO expansion, they thought they could uh, control uh, Russia.